When working with time stretching in Studio One, it's important to be aware of the various modes that are available to us because this is going to give us the exact sound that we're looking for as far as quality and the style of time stretching that is going to happen to our audio material. But first and foremost, I just want to make a quick note that when we click new to create a song, and let's just come to the templates to the regular record and mix. Now here within our settings, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that this stretch audio files to tempo is selected. And I believe this is active by default. So what this means is that whenever you bring an audio file into your song, if it has BPM data encoded into its metadata, it's going to stretch it to your current tempo. And in this case, uh, it's at 120. This is the default BPM that Studio One chooses when you create your new song. So if your audio file has a different BPM, it's going to be stretched to this tempo if this checkbox is selected. If you prefer for Studio One not to do this, go ahead and deselect. And it should remain unselected for all of the new songs that you create in the future until you again check this box and make that change. But we'll go ahead and cancel out of here. I've already got a song created. So let's click on the little paper icon to come to the song page. Now here I've got a couple of audio files that I've brought in from the browser and also a sample one that contains this same audio file. Now this audio file is not being stretched because it does not have BPM data. So if I come to the browser, we can see in my files, this is the piano keys. This is the piano keys. And while this is highlighted, we can see at the bottom, there is no metadata here. Okay, now this one here, this percussion sound, if I come to the loops, I brought that in from here. This is the one that's selected. We can see even in the title, it says 115. This says 115 down here. So you can always verify whether your audio files have BPM data by looking in this information panel at the bottom of your browser. But we'll go ahead and close that out. Now, because the checkbox for stretch audio files when imported into Studio One was selected, when I open up the inspector by clicking on the I here, we can see that time stretch is active. Although this doesn't have BPM data, so it was not time stretch. It's at its original uh, pitch. And we can see down here we have 120. And it's in red because when you import audio files that don't have BPM data, Studio One's going to add BPM data to that file as long as you have that setting checked in your options menu. And it's red because Studio One is saying, well, do you want to use this for this file? And then uh, so you can approve that tempo to be added to this file, but this file is not at 120. So I'm not going to approve that, but just so you know what this is down here and why it's red. Okay. And I'm going to press W to zoom out a bit. And if I would like to time stretch this audio file, I can hover at the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to hold down alt. And you see that we have a little clock that appears while I'm holding alt. I can then click hold and drag to stretch this audio file out. Let's go ahead and solo that, and then we'll play this back. Okay, so we can obviously hear that that's being time stretch, but we're talking about the time stretch modes in this video. So take note here, because by default, this is going to be on drums for the time stretch mode for all of your tracks. And we don't necessarily want to use the drums algorithm for a piano. So we can come to the sound and let's give that a shot and see if that sounds any better. Okay, and then let's also try out the solo. Okay, so that obviously doesn't sound good. And then here we have tape resampler. And this was added in, I believe, version 5 or 5.5, somewhere around there. And then this is going to treat your time stretch as a temp traditional sampler where the more you stretch it, the lower the pitch is going to be and the slower it's going to play back. So let's go ahead and choose that and play that back. I really, really love the sound of this sample when it's stretched like that. Um, so as you can see, depending on what you have for the mode for your time stretch, 
that's really going to determine the quality and also the style, uh, particularly when we're using the tape resampler. And regarding the tape resampler mode, this is similar to the traditional, as I already mentioned. So here on the second track, I've got the exact same audio sample that piano loaded into a sample one. So when I trigger on C3, this is where the original sample is placed at. So there's no change. Okay, but we can achieve a similar thing as we're doing on the top track in the tape resampler mode by Okay, so this is kind of the exact same thing, but we're just using it, doing it in sample one. Now, sample one does have a feature for follow song tempo. So when this is engaged, it's going to, let's go ahead and engage follow song tempo. Okay, so it's gonna play it the pitch lower, but it's gonna keep the, the pitch of your song, even if we play higher. Okay, so of course the higher you go, it's gonna be uh, not sound, the quality is gonna be degraded. Uh, let's play a little bit lower. Okay, so you can't really work miracles, but I just wanted to also mention the follow song tempo here, that that's available in sample one. Now let's go ahead and close this out and come down to our final track. Now here I've got some percussion, a percussion sample, and we can even see the 115, as we've already looked at, that the BPM data is already encoded into this. So this is already being stretched as soon as we brought it in because that checkbox was selected. Our tempo is at 120, this was, is 115, so it's being stretched by five uh, BPM. So it's already defaults to drums, as I've already mentioned, so then this one should be fine. We'll go ahead and play this back. Okay, so we can again come to the bottom right hand corner and hold Alt, and then I can stretch this like so. Now, if we were to take this off of drums and say choose sound, it's not too much of a difference. Let's try solo. Okay, that's not so great. And then tape resampler. And let's take this out even further. Holding Alt, click hold and drag. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Now, the last couple of things that I wanna mention is that we, in this video so far, we've been hovering in the bottom right-hand corner, holding Alt to get that little clock, and then click, hold, and dragging to create our time stretch. Now, we can also right-click on our audio files, and then here, we can see that there are some settings here that are changing when we make that adjustment. So the transpose, it's transpose uh, by minus 19, and the tuning is minus two. Also, the speed up is changed here. If this is set to one, then it's gonna play back at its original pitch. So if I were to double click here and put in one, let's press enter. Now we can see that this is returning to as it originally was before we made any adjustments. So just keep in mind, if you want this, this to play back by half, you can double click up top here. I'll put in 0 0.50, press enter. Now. We can see transpose and tuning has changed and then this is going to play back at half speed. Okay, this setting is also available within the inspector. So if we come to the bottom panel here, I'll click hold and drag this up. Now we can see we have speed up, transpose and tune here as well. So then if I click in this field and put in one, we're gonna be returning back to the default uh, position or playback that we had. Okay, so these are just some, some of the things that you wanna be aware of when you're working with time stretching in Studio One. I hope that this video has been helpful. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training with me in Zoom, that is available. And you can check out the description or pin comment for more information on that. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Take care.